Just a reminder before today's programme that if you're new to cassettes or are interested in learning about more, then check out our beginner's guide to cassette tapes. Also, if you're into collecting cassettes and different artists and genres, then check out our huge cassette haul that we did a while back, where we took a look at a haul of over 200 tapes. And now, here on AMTV, the complete series of Walkman Week. <laughs> Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome to the first in a new series. This is Walkman Week, so for this week, each day I'm going to be taking you through a different Walkman that I own, just looking at it, looking at what features it has, and just a bit about each model. And I thought I'd kick it off with the very first one that I've picked up since I started getting back into cassettes in general. Now, for those of you who saw my video last year about a beginner's guide to cassettes, you will have seen this, but this is my Sony Walkman WMF1 model, the um, F uh, standing for FM Stereo, I imagine. So there's the front, you can see it says FM Stereo with the nice F1. This is a big, bulky, chunky piece of kit, looking all around it there. So this came out around 1981, I believe. So this is in the very early days of the Sony Walkman. The first Walkman model only came out in 1979, and I believe this was the first model to include a, a radio in it as well. The corners have been a bit worn away just over time, but that's general wear and tear. And I use this thing like mad this past year. This has been my prime way to play cassettes for the past year until I started getting other models. And on the whole, it's been quite a gem to use. Now let's take a look at this thing on the body. So here is the FM on the top. So it's got the radio, you can tune it. Anything from like the low or mid 80s to 108 FM on the megahertz thing there. You've got a light for battery, so when you play it, there you go, the battery light comes on. That'll dim over time to let you know how much battery you've roughly got left. And uh, the FM stereo, that one's odd because when you play the radio, it doesn't always come on. Look, so I'll turn it on to radio, the battery's there. FM stereo only seems to come on at certain times, like when you find a really clear signal. It's not coming on now, but it does work. You've got your tuning wheel, you've got your volume, and I always appreciate Walkmans that have this where the numbers are on the volume wheel. It goes up to 10. Just so you've got an idea of roughly where you want to set it if you find a favourite. And funnily enough, it has two headphone jacks, A and B. In the early days of the Walkman, it seems Sony were trying to encourage like two people to listen together on one of these things. Maybe if you were in a car or a train, which is actually a neat idea. On the back, it has its belt clip, which is really useful, so you can hook it onto your trousers or whatever it might suit. Because of course, this is quite a chunky beast, and you're probably not likely going to fit this hole in your pocket, so... It's good that it's got its belt clip there. It's also got hooks if you wanted to apply a lanyard to it. I don't have a lanyard myself. I prefer my Walkman, if possible, to have a belt clip. The battery compartment is here, and if we just move that away, this thing is powered by four AA batteries, so make sure you've got a stock of those. In terms of its like how long it lasts, I don't have the official manual, but this has always been good to me in terms of the hours. I'd say this lasts at least 10 hours, if not more, on four AA batteries. It's quite a... It's quite a efficient beast if you like and the radio I think if you if you just use the radio it would last even longer so great battery life consumption but of course you've got your buttons here so these are nice metal buttons the shell is plastic but these are nice metal buttons that have this satisfying click just listen oh, oh man that just feels so good so you got your play you've got your rewind and fast forward all of which work you've got your stop which also serves as the eject buttons I'll show you how that works soon and you've also got a switch for normal tape, type 1 tape, or metal tape, or type 2 and 4 tape. Sometimes you've got to tell the difference, sometimes the information's on the cassette or the, the casing. FM Stereo Cassette Player WMF1 with the Sony logo, and you've got some of the information on it there. It's model number, this was made of course in Japan. Okay, so let's take a look at the innards of this thing. So you open it up, it's, I mean, it's pretty standard to any cassette player really. Your cassette goes in there, it's got a head. Pinch roller. Now I'm going to show you a tape in it. I've actually got a Walkman demonstration tape here from from Sony. This features what's this? Agana, uh, Rio Kawasaki, and the Golden Dragon. Okay, so obviously this is for demonstration purposes. So what you do is for anyone. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar, but for those who aren't, you take your cassette like this. You put it in there. 
you make sure that the obviously the two holes go in there etc and once it's locked and loaded this isn't at the start of the tape how do you tell well if a tape has this sort of brown color that means that's like the track itself what you want to do is rewind this till you get a clear or colored strip of tape so i'll show you so we hit i'm going to angle this down there we go so we hit rewind takes its time a little bit so it rewinds 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 goes all the way back to the beginning and once you're there hit stop and then there's a jet feature so you hit once to stop and then pops up like that pretty cool now this one actually doesn't have a colored strip it seems although if you look in there there's no more tape on that reel but most cases they'll have either a piece of clear or a red yellow just like a colored piece of strip so you put that in there thumb that down press play and you can see the cogs whirring there and your battery light is on. Now, the reason why you can't hear any music is because a lot of the older Walkmans don't have um, external speakers. The only way you're gonna hear sound off this thing is if you plug in a set of headphones. What I'm gonna try and do is plug into a boombox sort of device so you can get an example of the sound you can get off this Sony Walkman F1 model. Obviously when you've had enough of whatever you're listening to or you need to stop, you just hit stop, everything stops there and if you need to remove your tape, obviously, stop again, take it out, flip it over to side B on the demonstration tape, see and you can write your own things there, that's cool, I should do a video on the actual tapes at some point, shouldn't I? But this is Walkman Week. Speaking of Walkman Week though, these demonstration tapes, I'm not sure, it says not for sale, so obviously this never came bundled with any units. I got this, well, as part of one of the Walkmans you'll see this week actually, but I think this is pretty cool to have a demonstration tape for a Walkman. What else is there to say about the F1? Well, where are you gonna find it? I found mine on eBay. As I said, I bought it last year, about, well, this time last year, roughly. And I think I actually got pretty lucky because Walkman seem to be getting sort of more sought after by people and collectors and whatnot. So I'd say you're going to be looking anywhere now from between at the lowest, maybe 30 to about 100 pounds for this thing. I paid about 50. So I think I seem to get in the Walkman market at, at quite a good time. Obviously, when you're buying this, a few things you want to watch out for. Being as this is an old machine, this is nearly 40 years old. Ideally, make sure the seller, if they've mentioned it, has fitted new belts. Because what happens is, for anyone who doesn't know, right, the belt is what moves or helps move the cassette around, but they're just made of rubber. So over time, they stretch, they get loose, and they need replacing. And if you're picking up a player like this and that hasn't been done, it's more than likely that that belt is going to be worn and you're not going to get good sound. If you've got the technical know-how, great, do it yourself by all means. But often I try and buy from sellers where they say belts have recently been fitted or they've been able to do it themselves. Some people sell these models for parts only, so they'll say the radio works, but the cassette doesn't work, or the cassette works, but the radio doesn't, etc., etc. That's up to you. Again, I personally prefer to buy models that work throughout. I mean, yes, it's arguably a bit more expensive that way, but if, you, if you're not as technically gifted as some people, I mean, I'm not, I couldn't take one of these things apart and do, I can change a bell, but I can't do like, you know, technical reworkings. So just always read the descriptions on eBay and stuff like that. I know a lot of you probably do, but it's so easy to get caught out. But this thing is great. It's sturdy. It doesn't make that much noise really when you're out in public on, on its motor, which is more than I can say for some other Walkmans. But it's a really nice piece of kit. The battery life lasts a long time. The sound quality is great. It's relatively easy to maintain. When you clean in the head of this thing, which is just that bit there, you can, you know, press play. It's very easy to access with the cotton swab. You can dab it all you need to, if that makes sense. It's just a very accessible piece of kit, I find. And, you know, for something that's nearly 40 years old, it just shows the craftsmanship behind it. Really nice model. But that, of course, is just the first installment of Walkman Week. Over the next few days, you're going to be seeing different kinds of Walkman that I've got and how I think they compare to this and just my thoughts on them in general. But thank you very much for watching. Please let me know in the comments, do you own this model of Walkman, the F1? If so, what do you think of it? But also let me know in the comments, what Sony Walkmans do you have, if any? Do you have one with a radio? Do you have a standard one? Do you have one with some of the cool features that they came up with, like auto-reverse, mega-bass, uh, groove, 
Dolby noise reduction. That's the final thing I'll say that I forgot to mention. This doesn't have any extra bells and whistles. There's no Dolby noise reduction. There's no mega bass. There's nothing like that. But this, again, is the very early days of Walkman. But all that aside, considering this is the early days, they still did a pretty good job with this one. Hello, guys. It's Adam Martin here. And welcome back to day two of Walkman Week. And today on Walkman Week, we're going to be looking at this lovely model. This is the Sony Walkman WM22, as it says at the bottom right there. This is a very stylish model, as you can see. It's in a lovely blue color with red and black trim. Now, to the best of my understanding, this came out around 1984, and this was the first true budget Walkman. Before this, a lot of Walkmans were considered high-end models. They were fairly expensive for the time, although they had great quality. This unit had the great quality, but at a budget price. I believe in the UK it was, I think it said the first Walkman to be priced around or under £30, which back then I guess was considered accessible. It's made of all plastic, there is no metal parts this all, even the buttons are plastic, we'll get into those a bit later. But I honestly love the look of this model, it's very sleek, it's very stylish, it's very cool to wear. This came in a variety of colours, obviously mine's the blue model, you can also get this where red's the main colour, which is arguably the most popular one. You can also get one where I believe white is the dominant colour or black. If you just look on eBay or Google it, you'll find several different colours of the WM22. But I guess that shows how popular this unit was. So you've got the front there, it's a stereo cassette player, that's right, damn straight. You've got the usual Walkman iconography and then moving on to the buttons, you've got play, you've got fast forward and rewind and you stop and eject. So. In terms of the mechanism, if you watch day one, which I highly recommend you do, this is very similar to the F1 in the sense that you know you hit play, fast forward, rewind, stop and eject when you want to get a tape out. So stereo cassette player there again, I'll be upside down. And the inside of this thing is, very, you know, your standard cassette, one uh, main cap stand and it's got its pinch roller and it's cleaning heads in there, or head that you clean occasionally, should I say. So that is like the basic premise of the model itself. Nothing too much on the back, yeah, it's your battery compartment. One thing I'll say is, if you're buying this off eBay in particular, make sure it has a battery cover. I can't tell you how many listings I found where the battery cover just wasn't either included or it had been lost over time, and I can see why it is literally just a bit of plastic, as I'll try and show for you now if I can actually get it off. See, it's literally just one slice of plastic, and it runs off two AA batteries, so whereas the Walkman F1, you had four AA's, this one saves you power by going down to two. And again, the battery life on this is pretty impressive. Uh, I haven't quantified it specifically and I don't have a manual, but I'd say you could get a solid like nine or 10 hours out of this thing on, on two double A's for definite, which even for back then must have been pretty incredible. In terms of its sound quality, well, we're gonna jump cut to another part of the AMTV bass and I'm gonna play a bit of the tape for you, the demonstration tape that you would have seen in the last video and just show you what it sounds like. There you heard a bit of sound. As you can see, it's pretty crystal clear, but I have the demonstration tape here, the good old Ryo Karasaki and the Golden Dragon. So just to give you a practical demonstration, if you will. So this Walkman, like the F1, just slide it in there. Oh, if I can do that right. It's hard to do when you're behind the camera. There you go, pop it in there. Now all the functions work, so you hit play. We get it moving, press stop. And if you want to fast forward, yep, if you want to rewind all works <laughs> with those lovely clicking sounds as well and when you want to eject like the F1 just hit stop again and it comes up. So yeah pretty simple model really and other things that I haven't mentioned yet so if you can see there you've got your switch again for normal tape and your metal tape as well type 1 and type 2 and 4 whichever your preference. You've got your headphone jack we're down to one headphone jack compared to the F1 although I don't think that many people were complaining and also I guess if you want to do this now you want to listen with two people you can just buy a headphone splitter and you have the volume control annoyingly this doesn't have the numbers like the F1 I always liked having the numbers so I could you know roughly set my volume as a standard here you've just got to roll the wheel depending on you know what you're hearing in your ears basically you know it works well enough but I wish they had numbers on them and down there you've got your DC in uh, three volt output that's if you wanted to connect this to I guess at the time like a car or just uh, in the wall AC power 
I just prefer to use batteries and there's some information. This was of course made in Japan. So WM11-22, I never saw that 11 before, I wonder why that's there. I'm sure one of you guys in the comments will tell me, usually quite knowledgeable. So any downsides to this? Well, with it being made of plastic, I'd argue it's not as durable as some of the metal Walkmans that exist out there. The shock absorption on this isn't the best, but then I guess it wasn't on a lot of the early Walkmans, so I wouldn't recommend, say, running with this thing or doing anything too extreme because you will notice drops in sound quality. Also, this is probably, I hear a lot of people say this, the glass that leads to the tape itself can be easily broken. I've been very careful with this, obviously, but I guess if you do pick up a Walkman M WM22, just be careful. And again, always look on eBay. If the, grass, if the glass is missing or cracked, obviously, if, that, if you don't want to fix it, don't buy it. Same thing with the battery cover, as it is just one bit of plastic, so I'd like to make sure that's there, but again, that's up to you, that's just personal preference. What's funny about this Walkman nowadays is what was once considered budget and accessible isn't necessarily the case today. I mean, for a WM22, you're looking at anything to say from about £50 for one that's maybe missing the battery cover or anything like that upwards to about £150 for one that's absolutely brand new. I didn't pay as much as that for mine, I got a really good deal, but I'm just giving you an idea of what sort of price range you will be looking at, anywhere from about £50 to £150 for one of these things, so keep that in mind when you want to buy this, just unless you get a very, very good deal. Little fun fact as well, this Walkman, not this exact model, but the, the WM22 was featured in the 2019 movie Blinded by the Light, which was about a lad who was inspired by the music of Bruce Springsteen, and if you look on the poster, he is indeed wearing the blue version of a WM22. So it's actually kind of nice to own something that has been represented in a film and people might recognise. I know Walkmans have made a comeback in films, what with Guardians of the Galaxy and 13 Reasons Why, and indeed Blinded by the Light, so nice little tidbit of trivia. One final thing I'll mention is this doesn't have a belt clip, not the same way the F1 had, so you can't hook this on your belt. However, what mine came with, and I'd highly recommend you look for this when you buy one off eBay, is a shoulder strap, so it connects there and there, and literally it's nice and long, and you can sling it over your shoulder, and it is adjustable as well. I mean, when I first got this, I always prefer my Walkmans to have belt clips on them. I just think it's quite cool having a Sony Walkman hanging off your belt. So when I, this came, I was a bit dubious at first, but you know what, when I actually slung it around my shoulder, it actually fits really well and it's comfortable and it doesn't get in the way. So I'm all for the shoulder strap now, I've been converted. So just keep that in mind. If you want a belt clip Walkman exclusively, then the WM22 is not the one you wanna go for. But if you don't mind a shoulder strap, then it's all good. But that is really it for the Walkman Week review of the WM22. In, it gives a nice sound, it plays back really nicely, it's fairly easy to maintain and clean. You'll find lots of these on eBay, but again, just watch those pricings, be prepared to pay upwards of £150 at its absolute maximum. Watch out for the battery cover, make sure it's there if you want it. Get a shoulder strap as well if you can. But this is a well-made unit and, you know, 35 plus years later, it still holds up just as well as it did in 1984. Thank you very much for watching though guys, please leave a like on the video and let me know in the comments, do you own this model of Walkman, the WM22? If not, what kind of Walkman do you own if you own one? Are you more into actual cassette decks or, if, if, or different brands? Like you know, you've got the Toshiba stuff as well, there's several different brands that make Walkman-like stuff. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here. And welcome back to day three of Walkman Week. And today on Walkman Week, we're gonna be looking at a rather interesting model in my opinion. It is this. It is the Sony Walkman WM-B10. Now this thing was released around 1988 and I think it was the newest in a line of budget models at the time. This is made completely of plastic. I mean, look at that, it's very lightweight. The buttons are that more modern-ish plastic mold. But the thing that draws a lot of people's attention about this is the front. So you've got your this black circle, which does act as a window into the cassette, although a very hard to see through one. It's nice and white, my model. You could get this in a variety of colors. You could get it in, I've seen blue, black, red, a lot of colors you can get this in. But look at this at the front. So you've got the Walkman logo, cassette player, an essential item of modern life. Fantastic sound anytime, anywhere. Obviously, the second line is wonderfully ironic these days, an essential item of modern life, maybe not so much anymore. Fantastic sound anytime, anywhere, again, that depends on the model and the condition, just saying. 
But anyway, this is the WMB10, just a very lightweight. I call this the cheap because this, when you pick it up, this feels very cheap. It almost, you could argue it feels like a bootleg Walkman. It's definitely not. This is an official Sony product. Honestly, the lightness and cheapness of it just, I don't know. There's just something about it. But anyway, let's have a look at what's on here. We'll start with this. So that is your DC output. It's uh, three volts, sort of like the WM22 we looked at yesterday, if you want AC power. This one has a belt clip. Hooray, I'm a big belt clip fan. So, And this one you can attach or detach by the looks of it, so that's pretty good. And this particular belt clip I've seen on many revisions of Sony Walkman, so I guess it was interchangeable between models if you had different models. You can hook this on your belt, you know, tell people that you are in an essential item of modern life because you're that cool. There's your battery compartment. There you go. This runs on uh, two double A's. So that's not too bad at all. Put that back in there. Two AA batteries to keep you going. I haven't used this all the way to the point yet where the battery life's been depleted, but I've heard anything, you know, from seven or eight hours upwards to maybe 13, 14, maybe depending on the batteries used or something. So that's, you know, pretty good on most Walkmans anyway. Now for the controls. So obviously here you've got the logo, the WMB10 cassette player. You've got your play, you've got your stop, rewind and fast forward. That's standard in all Walkmans, but what have we got? on the top. Well, not a great deal, but you've got the usual uh, tape position. So flipping that over, so you've got the normal position and the metal tape position, depending on which tape you've got in. You've got one headphone jack and you've got a volume control, which again does not have numbers to identify the height of volume, which is a shame, but you know, what are you gonna do? But of course, we have to look inside here as well. Now, whereas the first two we looked at on Walkman Week, you just sort of slotted the cassette in, this one you can slide, slide the cassette in and then close the lid. So I'm gonna take the ever faithful Sony Walkman demonstration tape, you slide it in there like that, close the lid, and it is in. Now you might not be able to see, but I don't know if you can make out the logo. That is a window, I promise. So if you press play, it will start. Now if you heard that, it sounded like a very, took like a real effort, it sounded like to start. Um, rewind and fast forward work, have a listen. And backwards so it all works there but just just listen as this plays and if you can hear this like, like it's really making an effort to get itself going but if you allow me a jump cut we will cut to another part of the AMTV base and I will give you an example of just how this sort of thing sounds 30 years later That was very interesting. When I picked this up, the seller on eBay said new belts had just been fitted and everything. And I believe him. I mean, the thing does the thing does work. You get sound out of it and stuff. But I've always thought with the B10 that some of the sound comes across as muffled. And even when I plugged it into the speakers there, it sounded a bit muffled. I'm not sure if that's something to do with the, the heads. Maybe I need to clean them properly. Or, it, I mean, it could be a number of issues, really, when you get down to it. I mean, this thing is 30 years old, and since this was made for uh, the budget on the cheap, maybe the components inside aren't as like, higher quality as some of the other Walkmans. I mean, if the outer shell's anything to go by. I mean, even the WM22 we looked at, despite being a budget model, had a sense of quality about it in terms of its appearance and its feel. Not sure this has the same thing, but you know, this did prove popular at the time. Again, budget models and all, and it does work. I got mine off eBay. These, This is probably sort of the cheaper end of 80s Walkman you're gonna get. When I've seen these, I've seen these go from anything from about 15 pounds, but in that state it's either, you know, not working or needs some maintenance, upwards to about 50 pounds, but I have not yet seen one of these Walkmans sell in triple figures, so I've never seen this sell over 100 pounds. I think the most I've seen a listing sell for is maybe about 70 or 80 for one of the other colors, but this white one you can get for, well, it's just fairly accessible really. I wouldn't say you'd have too much trouble in finding one, but can I recommend the B10? It's kind of difficult really, because out of all the many, many, many Sony Walkman models out there, even just in the 80s alone, I'd argue there are much better and cooler models to collect. In terms of budget Walkmans, this or the WM22, I'd pick the 22 any day just for the, its design, its, its style, it feels a bit more like a high-ender Walkman even though it's technically not. 
I just think this one's a bit of an oddity now really, aside from the meme of it being an essential item of modern life, I don't see much reason why you'd necessarily want to collect this. I mean I did want to try and pick this up just because I liked having a variety and seeing, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the near future I either gave this away or, or tried to resell it. I didn't pay very much for this at all by the way, when we're talking like less than £30 I paid. I mean for what it was at the time, I'm sure it worked well in 1988, but even in terms of collecting and using it these days, not so much. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome back to the next installment of Walkman Week. So today we are going to be looking at the most recent model of Walkman that I own in my collection, and it is this lovely sleek thing. This is the Sony Walkman WM-EX670. That's a mouthful of a title if you ask me. This is a beast of a machine. This is from later in the Walkman's life. This is actually from around 1999, so at the turn of the millennium. So by this point, the Walkman was about 20 years old, and it's fair to say they'd, ref they'd refine the design of the cassette player over those 20 years. If you watch the previous two episodes of um, Walkman Week, you'll notice that the Walkmans are big, chunkier things. They're a lot more like sturdier and blockier. This is actually quite sleek, and it's all metallic. You can probably see the sheen off the light there. This is an all metallic finish. It's a really lovely design, and to be honest, this is this Walkman can actually fit inside your pocket. I'd say the previous three models we've looked at Maybe could have fit in your pocket at a squeeze, but it would have really bulged your trousers out. But this can actually fit into your pocket quite nicely. So with the 670, what can you do with it? Well, I've already talked about the design of it, and it's got these soft touch buttons on the front. It's actually reminiscent of really early Walkman models. If you look at the Sony Walkman WM2, which was a really early model of Walkman, it's actually quite similar to that, that the buttons are on the front, not so much on the top. We'll talk about the buttons in a minute. If you flick towards the top, you've got a headphone jack and that says remote. Now when this came out you could get a special set of headphones where you had like play options on the headphones itself. You know like how you have the microphone today, it was sort of like that. Although you can just plug in standard headphones as well, it's not mandatory. Hold is an interesting feature where you can hold the cassette, sort of like a pause feature. Um, which is, or you know, it's an interesting one, I don't use it much myself. You've got your volume control there, which I think is quite small, sometimes it's a bit fiddly to get to, but you know, it's, it's volume, it, it does what it says on the tin. So, this open feature, you just flick it down, and the thing opens, so there you go, so you can see you've got the head, and I actually quite like where the head's situated here, this makes it super easy for cleaning, you're not fighting with any parts, and it's actually got two rollers on here, which you don't see in most, well, especially like classic Walkmans as well, you don't often see that. But I think that's part of a feature which I will get into when we talk about features, but it's a really nice design and it's really satisfying to open and close it. So these buttons on the front you have, well, it says repeat, but this is essentially your play button. And what this also does, um, it has a few special features to it. If you, I believe if you press and hold it, it will actually, or just press it when side one's going, it will flip to the other side. So you can instantly access the other side of the cassette without having to physically remove the cassette from the Walkman itself. You've got your stop button, of course, and you've got your fast forward and rewind. And this function button is probably the most interesting part of it. Before we get into the functions, you might be wondering, where's the battery compartment? Well, funnily enough, the battery compartment is here. If you flick that aside, instead of using double A's, this was powered by one of these little things. This is a what is known as a gumstick battery or a rechargeable battery in NICAM. Now these were sort of coming into their prime sort of late 90s, early 2000s. You don't see the, this kind that much anymore. Mine came with the model that I bought, but um, a lot of the time these things, obviously their natural battery life is a lot less now. They are coming on to 20 years old. But don't worry, it's not the only type of battery you can use for this. Although if you do want to use a gumstick, you have to make sure you've got a AC adapter like this where you actually fit the gumstick into when you want to charge it. So the idea is you put the gumstick in there, you plug it into the wall, and then you can charge this battery to use in your Walkman. Alternatively, you can use this. Now this is actually just a battery holder. So you open it up and it's a single AA battery housed in there. That's right, this Walkman can be powered on one AA battery, which I think is an incredible feat of how the Walkmans evolved from four AA's to two, then to one. You insert it there, and then see this dial, you twist it this way so it holds, sort of tightens it. Like a screw, keep doing that until you can't do it no more. 
there we go so then you can power it via an ac battery now yes it looks a bit more ugly it's got this little black compartment sticking out at the bottom but i think arguably you get even more battery life if you use a double a something like it's something ridiculous like nearly 40 hours of battery life whereas the gum stick i think in its prime cutoff you may be about 12 to 15 hours but that's probably going to be less now so let's pop in the demonstration tape and let's see what we can do with this thing so we've got the demonstration tape in here so i'm going to press this button to start playing it now hitting the function button has a variety of features do it and hold the stop button there and it's a faint red light but you've turned on the noise reduction feature yes this walkman actually has dolby noise reduction built as a feature which is quite nice and if you press the play button while holding function you get a variety of sound features so you can turn on rv or you can turn on the mega bass or groove i think first or either or pretty much but basically you get a different bunch of sound features that basically alter how the music sounds so i'd have a recommend it having to play around with it see what you can get with that and you can also function these two buttons as well they have a feature so if you function and hit rewind you turn on the automatic volume limiter system there's another faint red tint you might fail to see it but that basically limits the maximum volume which helps me so i'm not shredding my ears into many pieces and probably the most interesting feature if you hit function and fast forwards you turn on the blank skip feature now what that does is if you reach like a dead part of the tape so there's no sound it will automatically skip to the next part where there's sound which i think is a really cool feature especially when you get to the end of a side in a cassette it takes you straight to the end and then flips it round. so again if i now if i press the play button or the repeat button when it's already playing you'll hear a mechanical sound and it will have flipped onto the other side which again i think is a super super cool feature i'll just do it again and it'll be flipping to the other side so there are several several functions here with this little machine funnily enough that the smallest machine of the walkmans we've looked at so far arguably has the most features to it i think that's quite novel But now, what about getting this thing today? These Walkmans are interesting because even though they're more modern, as I say, from like 1999, they are, I mean, their quality is recognized by the community who seeks out for them. Now, I paid about 80 pounds for mine, which I think is a good deal. I've seen various ones from say 50 pounds where they're maybe not in the best condition or not working, up to about 110, 120 pounds if they're brand spanking new. This one does play like a dream, as I say, I can fit it in my pocket. It's probably got one of the best uh, sounding, it's one of the best sounding Walkmans in terms of quality. I'd say there's only one Walkman which beats it in the sound department, which I haven't played for you yet. You'll see that on the next installment. But for what it is, for such a small machine, it packs a real punch. And I mean, with all the different audio features you can mess around with, such as the, the groove, the mega bass, the blank skip features, a really nice touch, the fact you can swap sides without even removing the cassette is a really great feature and in fact when you reach the end of a side it automatically flips it anyway so you don't even have to take it out but you know you, you can still do that if you want but i mean why do that when you've got such a great feature so all in all i'd say the wmex 670 is a real high point in the walkman's library like yes it may be from the later period i know a lot of people want the 80s stuff but if you just want a really robust great sounding walkman then this is definitely one you should consider. And just to finish on the side, you've got the Dolby B noise reduction auto reverse, which again, auto reverse is a great feature, groove, mega bass, you've got the limiter system, and it tells you the requirements for the battery. So it, yeah, if you want a great sounding Walkman, something that's really sleek, something that's gonna fit in your pocket, nice and easy, 
the EX670 is a strong, strong recommendation from me. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here and welcome back to the final instalment of Walkman Week and I think it's fair to say I have saved the best for last as today we are going to be looking at the creme de la creme of Sony Walkmans as this is the Sony Walkman Professional WMD6C. Now you might be thinking, how on earth can this be a Walkman? This is long, it's quite thick, it's quite chunky. Well, I must admit the walk using the Walkman name must be a bit of a stretch, but the history behind this is this was actually a professional bit of kit intended for, well, just that demographic, professionals. So journalists or people going to interviews, as this is not just a cassette player, it's a cassette recorder. That's right, you could record your own things on here and carry it around with you and for a long time it was the standard it's very high quality i believe it first appeared in 1984 and would continue to be sold in some form or another until around 2002 so this really did last a long time well into the cd era and even into the start of the digital era as well so let's take a look this is a big black metal box it's all metal it feels very heavy very sturdy there's the sony logo and of course the walkman logo professional and it has dolby b and c noise reduction and that was quite a thing for the time i mean walkman started to include type b reduction as you can see there not many if any walkmans to my knowledge bar this one had type c reduction that just helped filter out some more of the noise and you may think well how much does that actually play into it it actually plays into it quite a lot in my opinion when i listen but another interesting feature on top here as the different tape types now as you can see the thin yellow line there is set to norm or type 1 normal tape now, most Walkmans could play the next one, which was Type 2 tape or chromium, chromium oxide tape or, metal, or tape like that. But if you wanted metal tape, Type 4 as well. And some Walkmans offered metal tape playback, but not all of them did. So you could really play all different kinds of tape. Now, this is an interesting feature here. This is like, you know, when you play music and the bars jump up and down to register the sound. It's kind of like that, but this has multiple functions you can either turn it off uh, you can either show you the battery life when it's playing so i'll try and do that now so flick it to battery hit play and there you go the light is illuminated now the brighter the light that means the more battery life you have within it if it was really dim you better change the batteries and it also has peak which i'll show you later on when we're playing a tape in it but that'll basically register the volume so neat little feature i actually really like that as well now moving on to the side so you've got the headphone jack there, which is pretty standard, and you also have a microphone port amongst other things, and you can set microphone levels, 20 decibels, no decibels, all that sort of stuff. Your record buttons there, obviously. Your recording level is on here, and you can go from 0 to 10, actually really useful for gauging the sound. And if we move on onto the back, you've got a whole plethora of things going on here. Obviously, you've got a DC import. It's 6 volts. You've got to make sure you have the right voltage. You've got a speed tuner there, which can be flicked on and off, fast or slow. And you've got line in and line out ports, which again is very useful, especially when it comes to recording, meaning you can hook it up to other devices, which I, I mean, you'd be surprised how many Walkmans don't offer that capability. So that's really nice. Not much to see on the bottom, apart from it of information, it's got four feet there. So it does stand, well, it does stand when you have it like that, quite frankly. I like to have it upright, but now we'll move on to down here so what you have is obviously the headphone volume control so you can go from 0 all the way up until 10 and then you've got your features so you, you can play fast forward rewind or review and cue when you're recording you can pause which is a really nice feature that sort of hold feature and you can stop and eject so that is the basis like that's everything on the outside and i actually quite like the black chunky design even though it is very very chunky and very thick and definitely wouldn't fit in your pocket but how does it stack up well first of all battery life it goes on four double a's and if i open the compartment uh, the battery compartment is here i'm not going to take it out because i find it a bit fiddly but you put your four double a's in there and this thing according to its manual only lasts about six hours on four double a's now that is some people consider quite terrible but with all the features this thing has jam-packed into it, it doesn't really surprise me. However, as I say, if you have the AC adapter as I do, you can run this thing on off external power and you won't be burning through your batteries. So now we're going to take the ever trusty Walkman Sony demonstration tape. We're going to whack it in and you're going to hear how it sounds. So 
So that's with type C reduction. That's with type B reduction. That's with no reduction. Prefer to have it on type C. Nice clear sound. Probably the clearest sounding Walkman of its era. So you've just seen a clip of how it sounds there and I hope it comes across how clear it actually is. But I'll just show you some of those features again. So when you press play, obviously you can see the move there. And there you go, there's the peak. You can't hear it, but that'll be reacting to the volume of what the tape is playing at, which I think is a really cool feature. And actually, even though we're not recording, the counter is still moving. So when you record, this is a handy way for you to be able to tell where you're at in a recording. Say you want to jump to a part of the interview, you rewind to 738 that or is that 938, whatever that number is, and there you go. So it's a really nifty device for recording and playing as well, so I highly, highly recommend it for that. We'll press stop. And similar to others, you press eject, it pops up. It falls out, there you go. I honestly didn't plan that, it only just pops up, but that one fell out. Thank you very much, demonstration tape. And obviously this is a music tape, but for those who haven't recorded tapes before, it's pretty similar in appearance. So here is an example of a cassette you can record on. This is a standard TDK Type 1 ferric tape. These were abnormally common in the 80s and 90s. As you can see, it can record up to 90 minutes of audio. Now, this is a normal tape. You could get metal tape as well. It was probably a bit more expensive, and you can see the spools in there. Now, this is actually the tape I've been using to record the little spoken intros at the beginning of each Wantman Week episode. So they can be rewound and reused several times, but you know, the same size of cassette, so you just plonk it in and uh, I'll rewind it to the beginning because I don't need the audio anymore. Let's rewind and stop. Now, to get that going, start recording, well, you have to set your volume first, so I set it to that. You'd have your microphone plugged in there and you would hit record. And as soon as you hit the big record button, you can see the cogs start to move there. And with your microphone, you'd speak into it. And then when you play it back, you would be able to hear yourself on your recording. So it works like a charm. It's very easy to use, even though it's dubbed for professionals. I would say anyone can use this machine to pre-record stuff. This is an example of recording on the Sony Walkman WMD6C. I have used the microphone attachment here. And what you are hearing is played back on a Type 1 cassette in the D6C itself. I do keep talking about a microphone and well, I'll show it you now. Here it is, or oh, this is the microphone that I got given with it anyway. You could use a myriad of examples. This is a Sony model. There you go, it's an ECM MS907 microphone. You can switch it on and off 90 degrees or 120 degrees. Got the little boom attachment. Some of it has been peeled off, but again, really nice. It just looks like that. The design of microphones hasn't changed that much over the years. I believe this is sort of from the mid 1990s, at least that's what I was informed. And it runs off one AA battery, which is housed behind there. So again, one AA battery just to power a simple microphone. It's got a stand as well. Obviously you can customize it. You can put it on a proper stand. If I've ever used it, I just hold it in my hands because I just find that easier. From what I can see from the microphone port on the side, that um, red one there, you should be able to plug any kind of microphone that has that standard jack in. I'll just show you what the jack looks like on this. I think that's a standard three millimeter jack. Obviously this is a Sony branded one, but I'd say if you've got any microphone that has this sort of jack, it should definitely be able to plug into there and allow you to record whatever you want. One more thing I want to show you before I get into like price and finding this and stuff. Obviously, this is billed as a Walkman. So naturally, you'd think you can take this place as well. You can. Here is the official leather case. I mean, look at that inside. That velvet there. Ooh, very nice, very nice red velvet. So you would take your Walkman here and you would slot it in just to give it a bit of protection. I always prefer it when Walkmans come with cases like this because you can still get at it. So look, I'll give you an example. So you put the poppers down there. You can still see the cassette if you needed to see where the, the tape is at itself. You've still got access to your volume controls and your playback features, which are arguably the most important. 
but you've still got access to pretty much everything. Your record functions, the ports here, you've got uh, specific holes for ports at the back, which is really good. You don't have access to the speed tuner, but I guess if you're not using it, that's not too crucial. So you're getting access to most of the features here. And you think, well, Adam, you can't still carry that round in your pocket. If anything, you've just added to the thickness by putting it in a case. Well, fear not, because it actually comes with a carry strap as well. Now, I imagine for a journalist back in the day, this would have been essential. So you've got the clippers here. I'll attempt to do it. It's a bit fiddly, but the D6C has these two bits on the side. I'll put that into view. There you go. And you just clip it onto there. There's one. So nice and simple. And there is two, and just like that, you have a carry strap for your D6C going round with this on your shoulder. I mean, I, one thing I will say is I probably wouldn't recommend using this as your standard Walkman. Yes, it might be the best sounding out of the models we've looked at this week, and it's debatably the best sounding Walkman that has ever been made. I mean, it was made up to that professional standard. But in terms of taking it portably, I mean, it is very big and chunky, even when you are slinging it around your shoulder. If it's knocking against things, it might get damaged, etc. So unless you're actually planning on taking this out to interview people the old fashioned way using recording cassettes and microphones, I wouldn't recommend taking this out. This is more when you're at home. I mainly use this if I'm listening to cassettes at home because it's the best sound quality or if I actually want to record some stuff onto cassette, which I have been doing more and more of then that is when I will use the D6C here. But now I guess the question a lot of people might be asking is where can you get this from? All right, so where can you get this from? Well, I think some people online would make you believe this is rare. I'd argue it's not rare. I do see a lot of these pop up online. I mean, this was the professionally used standard bit of kit for you know almost 20 years so naturally a lot of units were going to be made and sold i mean i picked mine off ebay and you might be a bit gut-wrenched at this this with like about 20 blank tapes which is good for recording and the microphone the carry case the strap everything it cost me around 300 pounds now that might sound like a lot but considering the quality the build quality of this thing the fact that it still runs like an absolute dream now the sound quality is the best you're going to get off any cassette in my opinion the fact i can now record stuff myself in the long run it was well worth the investment i I've, I've already gotten that much money out of it i think and i think you would too i mean prices do vary on ebay mine was a bidding thing i see people trying to do buy it nows for this for i think in my opinion crazy prices like 700 pounds 800 pounds 900 pounds i'd say if you're lucky the cheapest you're going to get one of these for like in working condition just the unit itself none of the extras is probably somewhere in the vein of 170 180 pounds because in fairness they are really good bits of kit you know they're well made a lot of them were built to last all I'll say is if you're going after one of these, try and get a good bundle where you're getting a microphone or you're getting at least the carry case and the strap, you know, because I think getting the unit on its own is a bit pointless. If you can secure everything like I did in one go, that's much more desirable. You can check eBay. Obviously, some of these I've even seen these on like Facebook Marketplace of all of all locations. So I think this just proves this isn't rare in terms of like the quantity, but its value has held over the years as a lot of people like people on YouTube, people online, and, and people like me do actually class this as the best sounding, greatest designed, just the best Walkman, quite frankly. But that is all for this installment of Walkman Week, and in fact, that is the end of Walkman Week. We have reached the end of our journey. Five days at look, taking a look at the five different models of Sony Walkman that I have owned. Everything from the, the radio combinations of the WMF1, the cheapness of the B10, the stylishness of the WM22, and the more modern look at the um, EX670, and all to this, the professional finish. And I think I have finished with the best Walkman here. Out of all five, in terms of just sound quality and playback alone, I'd have to give this one the ultimate win. It doesn't win in every category, certainly not portability, but I believe I've shown you an example of a Walkman for every occasion in this series and if this series has inspired you to try using a Walkman or to go out and buy one please let me know in the comments if you've decided to pick up a Walkman of some kind and let me know which type is it one that we've looked at in this series or is it something we haven't looked at entirely thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed Walkman week please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and until the next one I will see you guys next time Well, that does bring us to a close this evening on AMTV. We do hope you enjoyed the program, and please do keep your eyes open for brand new content that will be coming to you soon. Until then, have a very good week.
and we hope that you join us again soon. Good night.